Hello everyone and welcome to this first impressions review of Fans Toys FT53 Parkour. Parkour! Now, I've been waiting for this guy for a while because it's um it's one of the last mini bots I've needed to sort of finish off my tune collection. Uh, I, I've got um I've got all of the, the season one mini bots, but there are some, uh, specifically uh, Wind Charger and Cliff Jumper, that aren't really in the um, cartoon aesthetic, and I guess Gears as well to an extent. But uh, Cliff Jumper was probably the most disappointing mini bot I own in terms of tune aesthetics. So uh, Parkour is uh, is a very welcome addition to the collection, given that it's more um, tune centric in its stylings, much closer to MP45 Bumblebee than. Uh, the old MP21, which is what my current uh, masterpiece, uh, Cliff Jumper, which is X-Transbot's Toro, uh, that's that's what that is uh, more closely aligned to in terms of aesthetics. Anyway, let's um, we'll get into that in a little bit more detail as we go on. Uh, first up, what I just want to do, as as always, is start off with a quick look at the box. Um, we've got a little box here, so it actually fits in camera for once, which is good. Uh, as you can see, some nice artwork on the front. Um, it's, uh, again, that kind of artist impression of the figure. So not typically very G1 styled, but uh, um, you can see they've obviously gone with the, the, the chibi alt mode there, uh, as the figure has. Um, but yeah, it's not actually completely faithful to uh, the tune model, is it? Um, on the back, we have the usual look at the figure and some of the uh, the display options. Um, what I will say is I really do like the way they've gone um, for this kind of opaque window look on this image here. I kind of wish the figure had this, um, if I'm honest. Uh, sadly, it doesn't. Um, one other thing I was gonna do was, let me just see if I can get that in. Um, if any of you want to read the bio, uh, there you go. I'll leave that on there for you to freeze frame and have a look at for a bit. It is actually quite an amusing bio. They've um, <laughs> they've got some uh, some, quite funny references in there to various bits and pieces like uh, um, it obviously being a, a little chibi sports car and uh, bearing absolutely no resemblance to uh, to a, a 924 turbo um, and uh, yeah they uh, they even get a Monty Python uh, Monty Python reference in there as well so uh, yeah not too bad but the only thing they didn't get a reference to was him being a DJ or something like that you know uh, sort of Casey Kasem reference but anyway that's uh, that's the back of the box um, and the sides. Nothing particularly uh, stunning or exciting there, or surprising to anyone who's seen any other fans' toy stuff. Uh, we also get—I'll I'll go through the uh, accessories actually while I'm thinking of it. We also get the usual sort of collector card, which has the bio repeated on the back there in incredibly small font, and it also has his tech specs, obviously, and pictures with the various display options. Um, so there you go. Don't really need to see that, do we? And it also includes an instruction manual, as you would expect, which has a fairly comprehensive set of instructions for transforming the figure. Although I'll be honest, now that Fans Toys has started to use YouTube to publicize its transformation videos, I tend to use those as a reference rather than the manuals because the manuals just, you know, it's much easier to watch someone doing something physically, isn't it, than to uh, kind of interpret it yourself through the manual. But um, anyway, that is that. Uh, as for accessories, you get a fair bit with this little guy. Uh, I'll bring some of it in now. Some of it is already attached to the figure, but because uh, uh, I've, I've had a little bit of a mess around with the figure. But first things first, we get this gun which will feel or look and feel very familiar to anyone familiar with the G1 series and this is the gun that he obviously used to attempt to take out Megatron when he had him dead in his sights and then still somehow missed um, that is there it obviously unfurls as such it has the stand on it um, so you can you know you could place this uh, Cliffy can actually wield this as well you can actually pose him looking down um, using this if you want so it's quite a nice addition to the set and I mean that's it's one you would expect to see in any cliff jumper <coughs> or with any cliff jumper figure uh, you also get some skis or um, 
hydrofoils, whatever they, whatever you want to call them, that's uh, attached to the the alt mode uh, to replicate that one thing from that one episode where he was uh, water skiing or hi uh, hydroplaning or whatever, aquaplaning, whatever. Um, yeah, it's slightly different than what I've seen before on other figures. Um, specifically, X Transports Toro did this by way of a sort of um, a big integrated sledge. Uh, the whole unit was. Uh, it was a big, a big cradle it sat on. Uh, these are just individual elements that attach to each wheel, so that's quite nice. Um, I've only, I've unpacked a couple of them. Obviously, you don't need to see. You've seen one, you've seen them all, really. So I'm not going to get them all out now. Um, he comes with uh, four heads in total. Uh, I've actually replaced one already. Um, so what you see here will be uh, the actual stock head that he comes with out of the box, and. I will say I'm not, I don't think this is the greatest head and face sculpt. I mean, the head sculpt's not too bad. Um, it's reasonably close. It's not completely accurate. I feel that um, it doesn't really show from this side as much, but when you look at it from the front, sorry, from the side, I don't feel that this lower part sweeps around enough. Um, it, it, the Cliff Jumper's animation model quite clearly shows that this bottom part sweeps out more, more reminiscent of a samurai helmet. Um, and indeed, Toro does that. Um, also with the face sculpts, what I'm not a massive fan of is the fact that his nose is a little bit too pointy. Um, his eyes are potentially a little bit too far apart and also the chin is not pronounced enough. They've kind of, um, they've put the little goatee on there, but that's, you know, his chin's supposed to point out more of an angle. Um, so yeah, it's not perfect, but it's not terrible. Uh, I don't think it's any better or worse really than anything we've had before. Um, but on the whole, it's it's fairly evocative of the character. Um, I also think the faces are a little bit too light. The grey they've used, I would have liked it to have been a shade darker. Sort of, um, Cliff Jumper's face is actually slightly lighter than the grey used on his body, but only a, a shade. Uh, whereas this is quite a lot lighter. Although in the show, um, as always, there were animation issues where sometimes he was depicted with an almost white face. Uh, but the animation model itself, uh, it should have had a darker face. But, you know, you can kind of forgive them that. Um, so that's the that's the neutral face that you get on the figure. Um, here we have his smiling face, his laughing face, which is OK. Again, I quite like this one. Um, sort of breaks up some of the other issues I have with the figure. Uh, the neutral face being the one that I dislike probably the most out of them. Um, but, yeah, that's the smiling face. That's OK. And then here we have, I guess you would call this the yelling, shouting, dismayed face, whatever. And again, that one's all right, but I don't know. It doesn't really make me think of any specific scene from the show. Like I'm not, or even the movie, like I don't look at this and think, oh, this is when Unicron's attacking the moon base and this is Cliff Jumper reacting to that. Um, so yeah, it's, it's. It's an okay face sculpt in and of itself, but it's just, I don't think anyone's really nailed Cliff Jumper in terms of a face sculpt yet. Anyway, that's uh, that's kind of it for the accessories I'll show you in isolation. But if I bring the figure in itself, uh, I can show you a couple of others. Um, as you can see, I've had it out of the box. I've played with it a little bit, as I say, that you know, um, this is not an unboxing video. This is a first impressions after I've messed around with the figure for a bit. So uh, what you do get with him, as you can see, I've already put a faction symbol on him. I put a vinyl decal on there. Um, I'm fairly happy with the placement. I never, as much as I ever am. Um, he gets his uh, his little cartoon accurate pistol, gun, whatever you want to call it. Um, that fits into the hand fairly securely. It's one of the new sort of style where the tab is at the back of the hand rather than at, at, in the palm. And I, I much prefer those. They seem to be far more sturdy, uh, far more secure than the, the alternate uh, method, which never quite worked. Um, and this is the head option I've actually gone for in the end, which is the sort of slightly smiling, um, almost like the talking face, I guess you would say. His, his, his lips are slightly parted. Um, I think I've done this really to differentiate it between um, Bumblebee on my shelf, which has um, the laughing face. So I didn't want to have two laughing faces. So I've gone for this. And, and I actually think this is maybe my favourite of the, of the sculpts. I think the face, it's, it's kind of like, it, it's like the neutral face, but it just, it just has that little bit extra animation to it, doesn't it? So it looks like he's talking. It brings it alive a bit more. 
Um, and yeah, I, I quite like it. Uh, from the front on, actually, you know, the, the helmet part of it actually looks fine. I think, you know, in some some scenes with the animation model, arguably, it's wider, it's more flared, but I, I can see why it's like this. Um, if we move him back a bit, um, I just want to give you a little uh, a little look at him. He's obviously not the biggest boy in the world. He's only only a dinky lad, but he's pretty he's pretty nice. Uh, you know, if you look at it, it's it's very evocative of the newer masterpiece style figures. Uh, you know, uh, Toro is a an old style, isn't it? It's the old old masterpiece aesthetic and and looks very much like MP twenty one. Whereas this really does fit in well with mp45 it's got those those same sort of um flared legs um the feet you know are not i mean they're still quite big but that's not a million miles away from the, the, the cartoon model but they don't have that kind of boat feet thing that that toro does um you can see i quite like the gray they've used here i like the red they've used you know it, it's well painted on here um, there is a mix of, of painted and unpainted parts on this figure um, there's die cast throughout in various places um, so it actually is a surprisingly sturdy or, or, or hefty little figure um, moving around you know that's the side profile and it tidies up pretty well I mean it does look a little boxy I'll say that you know it does look like a box on legs um, whereas I find Takara while they have backpacks, they they just seem to be more contoured, uh, whereas these are, I don't know, I, I just don't think they're quite as uh, quite as contoured or quite as aesthetically pleasing in some respects. But I will say that obviously the feet themselves, um, they still have visible tire syndrome, but because they're sort of hidden, it doesn't look as bad. Um, and you know, it, it's the Takara ones for Bumblebee, and even the the, the promo shots shown of the unproduced masterpiece Cliff Jumper. Um, they do have those really horrendous feet where the backs just aren't great at all, are they? I mean, these might have wing mirrors on them and the visible tires there, but as I say, at least it's red. Um, generally a lot cleaner. Uh, and the backpack, as I say, even though it's boxy, it is very clean. Uh, it does fold up nicely and compact, which, uh, to be honest, so does MP45s. So it's just a little bit hollower looking. Um I like that they've gone for a little bit of attention to detail. You've got the red circle on the back there, which is nice. Um, Toro actually has that as well, but you have to remove half of his backpack to see it. Um, it does look it does look pretty clean, you know. I'm not gonna not gonna lie. Um, you know, the back of the head has a has a bit of a seam in it where the face actually attaches by way of a, a pull on and off gimmick. So you don't pull the face off. You actually, as you can see, pull the whole front of the head off. So it's, you know, you kind of have a bit of a, a gap there where that plugs in, but it doesn't look too bad. Um, yeah, every, every, everything I think looks pretty good um, when you, uh, when you take a look at it like this. And he's got quite a lot of personality. As I say, like this little pose here, you know, he's not really doing much, but that, that is cliff jumper, isn't it? When you look at it, it's a, it's a nice looking figure. Um, I think it looks, it looks, you know, everything that I would want from a Cliff Chumper figure, or almost everything, as I say. There, there are a few things that I'll go into in final thoughts that I think can be improved upon. But um, anyway, I think with that out of the way, uh, you've obviously had a look at the figure now, had a look at the accessories. I think maybe I should just go through some of the articulation because there are a few things I wanted to discuss here. So uh, one of the problems I've had with fans' toys figures is that you know, and certainly fans' toys um, supporters tend to overlook this, I find. Well, they're, they're rabid supporters. The figures do look great, but I find that they're, they're not actually providing the level of articulation that other companies are now. And indeed, they also, their QC is not quite as good as everyone seems to think either. So I'll go through that as I, as I talk about the, the figure. Um, the head itself is on, um, it's on a mushroom peg. Um, and it can look up. Now, it only really looks up to this degree without it becoming a bit silly. Um, it can look a hell of a long way up, but it completely breaks the sculpt, as you can see. But obviously that's designed so that you can have him lying down using that, that long scoped weapon and take photos from the front, and it doesn't look silly there, does it? So that's fine, but 
if you wanted to use that to look up normally, then well, you can see the inside of his head, which is really not great. Um, also, I will say that when replacing this head, um, trying to get it off the peg is quite, it's very stiff on mine anyway. And I do worry about this mushroom peg snapping um, when I'm trying to force this. I mean, I've done it both ways, like trying to prise it this way or even trying to push it off, pull it off that way. Um, and both ways, I don't I don't really like how tight it is. I feel like it could lead to uh, to problems. So I'm probably going to leave this face on um, and uh, and sort of call it quits because I, I'm, I'm slightly worried about that. And that's that's the thing that I'm slightly worried about across the figure with some stuff. Um, anyway, uh, continuing the articulation, you get a, a obviously a left and right. Well, you can do a 360 with it if you want. Um, what with it being on a mushroom peg, there's no sort of side to side head tilt or anything like that. Can't really look down. I mean, you get a tiny bit there, but he's not looking over that part anyway, is he? Um, so yeah, so there's uh, that. That's the head articulation. It's quite limited, um, even compared to other smaller bots. I find anyway. So uh, actually, I might just move the camera down. A a tad because he is quite small and I can bring him closer this way that's better um, the shoulders are able to do a 360 on friction they are and you'll see this is one of the things they are quite tight and it causes on my, at least on mine and on this side it causes this red bar here that's on the shoulder to disengage from the notch that it's supposed to plug into um, now that's because this is very tight on the friction. I may I may try, I don't know if I'm going to be able to, but you can see there's a screw in there. Um, I may try and get a screw, a screwdriver in there, a small, a very, very small one, um, and see if I can loosen that a bit because there's no need for these shoulders to be this tight. Um, they really are too tight. And yeah, I, I whenever you manipulate the, the shoulders, I feel like the figure has a tendency to come apart. Now the shoulder here is also very tight. That's also on a screw, so I may try and loosen that. Um, and the reason for, for that is because it, it has a tendency to pull this backpack apart as well. Um, it hasn't done it so bad that time, but these are only held in by small plastic pegs. And when I've been manipulating this before, it's pulled this out. So the shoulders for me are overly tight. Um, and this is compounded by the fact that the rest of the arm joints are very, very loose. So, um, the, the elbows are particularly bad, as you can see, like that is really floppy. Um, and this is pinned as far as I know, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to do anything about that. I don't even think I could get any um, any sort of stuff in there, like any floor polish to kind of, you know, I just don't think there's any way of applying it. Um, I, I might have a go, but it just seems very, very floppy. And um, it seems that it's quite a widespread issue, this. Um, I, I had thought it was universal, but I've spoken to a couple of people since who've said theirs aren't too bad. But And as you can see, my right one isn't as bad as the left. That one at least holds. But yeah, the left one's very, very floppy indeed. Um, also, the bicep swivel there, also very loose. I mean, that's that's not as much of an issue. But again, compared to that shoulder, these joints, you know, the tolerance is... Are just not there um it's just it's just a bit odd that the, that the shoulders are so tight and these these joints are are very loose um the wrist obviously it makes very little difference if that's loose to be honest it's not it's not too bad um it does have the old style masterpiece carbot hands so if i can actually get my fingers in there you can see just a molded piece four fingers on a single pin molded you can't do anything with that or the thumb so again i suppose it's forgivable on a bot this size but i have seen bots at this size with better articulation in that area um speaking of uh, of articulation better articulation in this area he has a pretty limited waist um, range he can rotate well, you can rotate 360, but it's actually an off axis. So when you do it, it looks a bit weird, as you can see. Not that you would have him doing this, would you? But you can only go so far before it looks a bit odd um, because the pin is sort of, uh, for transformation, it's an off axis pin holding it to that. Um, another thing I would say is like, it's, it's very clear that there's no actual ab crunch here. Um, you can disengage the backpack. And this joint here is for transformation. So you can disengage all of this and 
fake an ab crunch, but it looks terrible. Um, and it's really just a transformation joint and not one you can use to fake stuff like you can on some figures. So I'm not even going to count that as articulation. Um, similarly, you can disengage all of this and get a butterfly or pseudo butterfly. But again, it's just a complete mess. It looks like garbage. So I don't give it any credit for that. So those are two like what I would now class as fairly standard articulation uh, points that this figure doesn't have. Uh, moving on to the legs though, uh, I'll just move this hip skirt a little bit because I don't want to damage it. Um, it does have a good range of motion out to the side. You can get a full full uh, sort of range of motion up to 90 there and that holds, that is nice and um, firm. That is good. Um, it doesn't have a huge amount of motion backwards because of the cut. Um, you can go about that far, I've noticed. So I suppose it's not too bad, but the leg's on a weird angle. It's more out to the side. Um, but it's because it just hits this piece here because uh, this whole skirt, as you can see, rotates with the leg. Um, that does mean that when he kicks out to the front, he can get 90. Yeah, well, there or thereabouts anyway, not far off 90. Again, it gets caught on the leg. Um, it's not too bad. I've noticed that when you pull the leg back, though, the skirt doesn't really come back around completely flat you have to mess around with it to get it to there and then push it up so again it's not it's not really spring loaded it doesn't work as well as sort of uh, some of the the other masterpiece scale figures that that use this kind of mechanism but it's okay uh, the thigh swivel again very loose on mine not the end of the world I guess because of where it is um, you know it's not something that you really worry about being too loose again the right side on mine better than the left so it seems to be the left side of my figure that's looser than the right um, the knee like the elbow is only single jointed but due to the design of the figure you, you can get a good range of motion but it does look rather weird it's something fans toys has done recently i believe on a couple of its bots um, these knees being pinned at the back they leave a big gap here and rather than being in the middle and it just looks a bit odd i think um, not not terrible. I kind of you know I can kind of understand it, but it it's not the nicest looking. Once you go past a certain point, it does look a bit hollow there, and it's it's not great. Um, and I've seen companies like Bag Cube, you know, with their steamroll, get a lot of stick for the knee. So I think it's only fair to point out that Fans Toys is not infallible in that area. Um, coming down to the last sort of area now, we have the feet. Now they're on ball joints, yet they still have a surprisingly limited range of motion. Um, the, the toe tilt's not bad, you know, they can get a pretty good range of motion on the toe tilt. Um, but the, the rocker, there's not really a lot there. And again, it's because of the cut and the design of the feet. Um, you can get enough so that you can get a, a fairly wide A stance out of him, I guess. Um, but yeah, it's, it's not as wide as I would have liked, um, or as much of a range of motion as I would have liked. But there's probably enough there for, for you to do what you need to. Uh, and looking at him there now, you know, he looks fairly dynamic. Um, you know, he's ready for action, isn't he? Um, but yeah, I, again, that that is the real, annoys me that, that is just unacceptable really, that being that loose. Um, but that that's really all there is articulation wise. Um, I think aesthetically, you know, I can kind of accept some of the limitations for the, for the way it looks. Um, you know, I'm looking at it now and it really does look nice. Uh, I think maybe this piece here is one of the only bits I don't like having that transformation bit, that cut there. It kind of ruins the look of that piece. But, you know, that's an acceptable compromise for the rest of the figure looking so clean. Um, obviously, it's a faux chest. The rest of the car is on the back. Um, so, yeah, Fans Toys does faux parts as much as anyone else, ladies and gents. Um yeah, I, I don't really know that I've got much else to say about it aesthetically. I think it looks, you yeah, know, it looks good enough. You know, a few screws, well, quite a lot of visible screws, actually. Um, but yeah, it, it does look, it does look the part um, in terms of a, a, its G1 goodness um, or cartoon goodness anyway. Uh, I want to illustrate that, actually, if I can, by bringing in Toro, uh, because obviously this is my current masterpiece, Cliff. And you can just see the difference in style immediately yeah, between these two. Um, that's very much the old masterpiece aesthetic, isn't it? You know, um, and it's always amused me how like stumpy his his shins look. It looks like he's got very long legs and stumpy little shins. 
and then gigantic feet, which are just basically, obviously, the bonnet of a car. Um, and yeah, I just, I don't know, I just, the shape of the chest was never right. The arms were never really right in terms of their sort of proportions. I, I like that the sort of, the helmet isn't too bad, but again, not as good as fans' toys and the face isn't as good uh, either. So, you know, and then when we start to get around the side, things don't get any better because, you know, at, at least with fans' toys, that looks like his entire body. And then this is the backpack. Uh, so I can put up with it being sort of a cube. Whereas with this, his entire body sort of is slender. Then he's got this whole thing hanging off the back. So it really exacerbates it. And I don't like the way it tucks in underneath. Um, it's never been one of my favourite figures, this. I, I was always unhappy with it, but it was the best of the available options to my mind. So I went with it just because I wanted Cliff Jumper in the collection. But yeah, I, I think, you know, I'm going to be retiring this guy to the alt mode, definitely. Um, but I, I do like the alt mode. So we'll come on to that when we do the comparison. Um, but, you know, this guy does have a lot of uh, sort of, I guess, display options. You know, you get way more accessories with this. He, he has this weapon here. He has uh, he has another version of that weapon. Um, he's got a bunch of other guns. In fact, he's got some uh, sort of staffs that he can wield. He has this uh, this piece that was from one of the episodes of the tomb where he shot sort of liquid nitrogen or something or whatever he shot. He's got another piece that attaches to the uh, the front of the car in this space here, which is like a little gun that pops out. Um, that pops in. I think it's got. A, I don't think it's got the rear firing gun that was in the More Than Meets the Eye episode, but of course neither does uh, parkour. So. Um, yeah, I, this was a, this guy was not bad, but I think it, you know we can all agree that in every meaningful way, this Cliff Jumper from Fans Toys is is a much better representation of the cartoon aesthetic. Um, you know, it, it, the proportionally it just blows it away. Um, the height's much better. Uh, this guy was always a little short because uh, it scaled with MP21, not uh, MP45. Uh, yeah, so. That's the comparison for those who wanted to see it. I think, unfortunately, I don't have Hellion. Um, and fortunately, I don't have um, Ace Tumblr. Um, so, yeah, there you go. Uh, that is that. We'll get him out of the way. Anyway, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to transform this guy into his alt mode. And then I will come back with a look at that. Uh, we'll do a brief comparison with Toro as well. And then we'll finish off with some final thoughts, maybe a comparison with some other figures as well. I'm sure there are a few masterpiece figures that uh, will be worth showing off with him to see how he fits into that G1 season one cast. Um, yeah, so give me a moment and I'll be back with a look at the alt mode. Okay, and through the magic of editing, I'm back fairly quickly. In real time, that took me... About an hour, I'd say. Maybe. I don't know. I wasn't really timing it. But god damn, what a frustrating transformation that was. Um, so yeah, continuing continuing Fans Toys' long tradition of uh, having pretty looking figures that are an absolute nightmare to transform. Um, I still don't think I've got it entirely correct either. There are some gaps. Um, I honestly got to the point where I'm like, I'm going to break this thing if I'm not careful. So I think it's supposed to tab in a little bit better on this back window part. And this is supposed to sit flush. And this is a problem on both sides. I mean, I can see it does. It is supposed to tab in. But the problem I was having with it um, was every time I tab one thing in, something else would pop out. And I, I, I'll be honest with you, I just got fed up in the end. Um, I don't know if I have broken something inside. There's a piece of um, translucent blue plastic there that's a a peg that goes into a hole. I don't know if that was entirely successful without breaking. Um, I guess I shall see when I open it up, but uh, I don't know. Can I can I get these last two bits? You can see that there is a hole there that this is supposed to fit into. Um, I don't know why I just unpegged that. Is it like I'm expecting to magically get it working now after the amount of time I've been messing around with it? Um, yeah, I, I'm I'm not uh, I'm not likely to have much more success with that in the next minute or two on camera when I'm trying to demonstrate it to you guys, am I? Um, but yeah, basically, you can see there's not a lot of room in there to do stuff and things are supposed to pop in and whatever. But yeah, I'm not 
I'm not going to get that any better than I have. I think I think that's about about as good as it's going to be. Um, so apologies for it not sitting entirely flush, but you get the idea. I mean, I've kind of pushed it in a little bit more there now, but it just seems to want to pop out every time I do it. Oh, I've got that side in. What about that side? Oh, right, okay. I have managed to get it flush. Hooray, hooray for me. Um, elsewhere, though, there are gaps. Uh, part of it, I don't know if it's me or if it's actually the design of the figure. Like this door, I couldn't get to sit completely flush. Um, there seems to be a permanent gap in the, the bonnet there. I don't know. That just seems like a design thing because I can't see how that can be pushed any closer together than it currently is. But uh, that's the underside of the vehicle if you're interested. Suffice to say, this was, yeah, this was a, a, as much of a mare as I thought it was going to be prior to, a, to a owning the figure, prior to uh, unboxing. You know, I'd seen a few videos, uh, Fans Toy Zone and a couple of other reviewers have already released their reviews. Didn't look like it was going to be fun, and it wasn't. Um, just so many, like, I don't know, I guess flimsy parts that kept popping off ball joints and stuff back here. Um, the tolerances are such that like, unless you've got everything perfectly aligned, they don't fit together. Like this back section was a real pain. That's why I took the bulk of the time was getting this back section aligned and pegged in. It's because these arms are on sliders. So you need to move them out and then you need to fold them back around, um, to hide the, uh, the faux chest. But if you haven't got these red pieces here, those uh, aforementioned locking bits that I, I mentioned that move, move when they shouldn't do, pushed all the way back, then these arms don't meet quite enough in the middle. They look like they do, but they, they aren't quite enough. So you don't get the clearance then to snap these two back halves together and use these securing sections to, to lock them in place. Um, that was the real pain, I will, I will admit. That was the bit that really, really made me close to just giving up with it. Um, but I wanted to do it. I wanted to persevere, <coughs> if only to do the comparison with Toro, if I'm honest. Uh, I'm not, you know, the rest of it wasn't as bad. Uh, you know, the front of the car was easier. Still not what I'd call easy, but it was easier. Um, and yeah, a lot of this trying to get the doors aligned and get everything like sitting flush and, you know, where it should go, stuff just pops out, doesn't look you know, I mean, I mean, it's not too bad now. It looks okay because I've spent a lot of time on it. But yeah, it's not, it's certainly not what I'd call an enjoyable transformation. And I, I guess like the end result, yeah, it's kind of cute. I guess it's, it's it's chibi alt mode, isn't it? It looks okay. It's not completely tune accurate. It's actually too long in the bonnet for that. It, it needs to be even more stunted, um, which I think the masterpiece version that was shown was. Um, this has obviously sacrificed that. Um, it's sort of halfway between a real world and a chibi mode um, or the, the full on chibi mode to uh, to give you a cleaner backpack, etc. But, you know, it looks good enough, I guess, in this mode. If this is what you're into, the super deformed look, I'm really not that bothered about it. So, yeah, I, I you know, all that effort to get it into this mode so I could demonstrate it. And to be fair, this is the last time it's going to be in this mode ever. I would have thought, um, you know, I, I'm quite grateful I don't seem to have broken it too or too much, if at all, going to this mode. But I'm not entirely sure that I won't on the way back because there, again, are a lot of tiny little bits of plastic that could snap. And I don't know. It, it's just it's, it's just very indicative of my of my overall experience with fans toys. You know, I, their figures look good, um, but they, they seem to be, you know, they're praised for like how, how bling they look. But people are often overlook the fact that the transformations are dire and that things break, they're not toleranced well. You know, it's not an enjoyable experience. Whereas transforming something like, you know, my last few purchases have been things like MP56 and MP57, you know, Takara stuff. And they were a joy to transform compared to this, you know, didn't really have any issues with them at all. Um, and even other third party stuff I've bought, um, from the likes of, uh, say, <clears throat> uh, X Transbots and that, you know, they've they've had their share of uh, of um, issues, mostly QC, um, but the actual transformations themselves are not generally as bad as as this. Um, yeah, so I don't know. Um, I can only speak to what I what I find, and that's uh, that's what I found. Anyway, uh, let's look at some accessories. As I said, 
you get some ski accessories with this and I'm pretty sure these just clip on over the wheels. Um, I really should probably read manual, shouldn't I, before I show stuff. Uh, but yeah, I think they clip on like that. Maybe you take the tires off. I don't know. Do you take the tires off? Because you can do, you can take the tires off like this, but I've got a feeling then the tolerances will be off and they won't secure, or maybe they will. Oh no, they do, right, okay. Yeah, so you're supposed to take the tires off. Um, I'm not gonna demonstrate all of that. Maybe I'll do the front as well. Let's just take that off so you can see one side completed. Ah, oh, come on. And then pop this on onto the axle. There we go. That's what it looks like. Yay. Um, that one thing from that one episode. Yeah, I will honestly never use this again. Uh, another thing you're supposed to be able to do is to combine these two weapons. So you, you're supposed to fold that back and then rotate this 180. Sorry, not 180, uh, 90. Uh, 180 wouldn't have helped, did it? Because it would have had the same problem. No, 90. And then you're supposed to be able to... Um, combine it with the back of this there you go so it does it does kind of stay on there and then there's a notch on the back of the car where you can I don't know do I have to fold anything down no apparently not apparently the notch you just fit it in like that I think maybe is that right that looks wrong but it the instructions kind of allude to this. Um, and yeah, you just put the gun on the back like that and then way you've got a big missile sled, I don't know. Um, again, not something I'll ever use because I'm not going to have it in this mode. Um, one thing I will say as well, though, in this mode, there's a lot of sort of mismatch in the paint because obviously some of it's plastic, some of it's painted. But there are, I don't know how well it comes across on camera, but there are quite a few different hues of red, um, like especially down here on the hinges, and on these pieces here, um, obviously on the front, you've got the chromed lights. Um, but yeah, there's still a little bit of difference. You can see there's a difference in this paint here, or this piece here, and this piece here, and these pieces. Um, so yeah, it's not a particularly uniform finish. Uh, it's not too bad on the back, I guess. But yeah, it's not the, not the best finish in terms of uh, uniformity that I've ever seen. Um, I do quite like, you know, in this mode, the sort of light blue... Uh, trans transparent blue does come across better than it does in bot mode. In bot mode, it looks quite dark, but it looks nice here under the light. Um, very sort of Takara in its in its approach to that. Um, although again, like I said on the box, I really like the look of the the opaque uh, windows. They did look really cool. Um, I'm just going to get rid of this because I don't want that. Um, I do worry about scratching this thing as well because of the tolerances. You know, they do work. They they even you know, you know there's an issue with it when they make uh, a special mention of it in the manual and their online videos saying hey don't open the doors too much because you could scratch them it's like well, maybe tolerance your figures better um but yeah i think you know the, obviously the rear window's opaque but had they done it all in a light opaque color i would have probably preferred that if i'm honest um, but i'm a bit weird I'm quite full on tune aren't i those of you who watch the channel will know that uh anyway so that's what he looks like I, i've, I've rambled on about him as much as I should or probably more than I should as usual um, what I wanted to do if I can find it I'm not sure what I did with it now just give me a second yeah what I wanted to do was bring in good old Toro here in his alt mode and I will say that obviously this is a, a far more real world alt mode this was so much easier to transform. <laughs> it really was. I, I know it's, you know, it's basically, I mean, they're both sort of, um, they both utilize faux parts. It's just this one obviously being older and having a huge backpack and just a, a bigger alt mode anyway, or a lot, at least a longer alt mode, although not by much when you actually look at it. You know, this super deformed alt mode is only marginally smaller than the, um, the full size vehicle. Um, or real world design, it's not really full size, is it? It's not as big as a normal car bot. But uh, anyway, yeah, this was just a lot easier to transform. I mean, this took me probably five minutes. I haven't transformed it in years either, like literally since I um, got it. Um, I can't remember if I did a re video review for this one, maybe not. But yeah, I haven't done anything with this since then. And yeah, it's 
it was just I, I, I did reference the video. Um, the the was it five nine eight robots? Is that what he's called? The guy who designs it. His video on YouTube and literally yeah, just followed that through. First go, bang, done. Um, this guy is not as heavy as this guy really. I mean, there's not much in it. This one feels slightly heavier, maybe. Um, I mean, maybe not heavier, but like it just feels more compact, I guess. So that's why maybe it's it's more compact. Whereas this is unbalanced because it's heavier at the front because of the boat feet. Um, but I guess they're they're actually fairly comparable, you know, without actually getting a scale out to to weigh them. Um, but they feel this because it's you know not as compact as this. You could hear more of a rattle, but there's a rattle on this as well. I, I don't think either one of them can make a case for being better built than the other. I mean, this has got its issues. This has got its issues. Um, the issues with this are really more around the aesthetics for me. I think the actual build on this is one of X Transport's best products. Um, you know, for a small mini bot, it kind of flew under the radar actually. But yeah, this is probably one of the most solid, um, well produced X Transport's figures that I've ever handled, and I've got quite a few now. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's it's a really nice looking vehicle. I'm probably going to keep this in alt mode now on my shelf, uh, my my alt no alt mode display shelf that I have um, for all the duplicate figures I have. Every time I replace one, I, I put the old one in alt mode and put it on the shelf of uh, of dust. Um, whereas this guy will obviously be my bot mode figure. So yeah, I mean that's that's what it is. Um, pick your poison, really, isn't it? You know, if you like if you like the super deformed chibi alt modes uh, that you had as the toys and in the cartoon, you're going to love this. You're going to think this is much better, and it is a cute little car. I do think it looks nice. Um, just the effort to get it there is not worth it. It's, it's really not. Uh, I mean, I guess if you bought two or if you only wanted it for alt mode and once you got it there, it was never moved again. Great. It, then it does the job. It looks nice. But but even if you look at it now with all the lights on it, you know, you can see all these like the windows. There are lots of like you can see the pegs, the blue pegs that are in it. So it's quite untidy. It doesn't look very clean. Um, I just yeah, I, I don't know. I'm just not completely sold on it. You know, don't hate it, but. I hate the bloody transformation. That's for sure. That that gets a a, a hard pass from me for, for, for future transformations. Whereas this guy, yeah, I like transforming it. It was nice and easy. I could probably go back to bot mode from memory now as well. Pretty easy and and so forth. Um, yeah, obviously way more real world than the other. Um, yeah, if that's your thing, this is definitely a good option for alt mode. Anyway, that's enough talking about cars. That's not where my interests lie. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get this one off camera, transform this one back into bot mode. Um, so I'll probably be back in, I don't know, maybe another hour. Uh, hopefully not with a broken figure. Um, but uh, yeah, if I am back and I'm in a very foul mood, you'll know what's happened. But uh, fingers crossed, I'm okay. See you soon. Okay, I'm back after the transformation to robot mode. I have to say that that wasn't quite as bad as uh, going from bot mode to alt mode. Um, still not the best transformation I've ever done, not the most fun. Um, some bits where I was like, I'm going to break this. But I got there in the end, I think, largely unscathed. Um, what I will say is I've noticed that after the transformation, this joint now is even worse. Um, it literally will only stay in 90. If I go anywhere in between now, it is super loose. So that is uh, really, really poor QC as far as I'm concerned. That's a bad, bad um, design that that can happen after one transformation. It wasn't great before, but literally just collapsing the arm, which was a real pain to do, I have to say. Um, it's, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, Fans toys quality, eh? Uh, anyway, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna dwell on that. As I said, I think overall there are some QC issues. I, I made that uh, abundantly clear when I was trans when I was uh, you know talked about the transformation to to uh, alt mode. Um, there are some real sort of niggly bits with it. Um, I don't know. On the whole, it's not too bad. Uh, yeah, thanks, Mister Thirty, uh, for that uh, and the other bits. Um, yeah, on the whole, it's not terrible, I guess, you know, but it is, it just takes the shine off it. You know, it, it's not, I don't know. I, I, I find myself 
becoming increasingly annoyed by these like minor issues that could probably be avoided. Um, these things aren't cheap, are they? Um, yeah, it's just a bad design. You know, the elbow's not not great. Um, there's no way of tightening it that I can see. I mean, I, I guess after the video, I'm going to have to try and take this apart, collapse it again, see if I can get some form of um, thickener in there to, to kind of hold it because that is just ludicrous. I mean, I literally can't do anything with it. I mean, it's it's not even holding it 90 now. Look, it's actually got worse as I've been manipulating it. It just, yeah. So that's that's a big negative as far as I'm concerned. Uh, the, the overly complicated... Um, fiddly transformation is a massive negative as well uh, i'm not a fan of it for the ultimate payoff um, and as i said yeah that, that that coupled with the qc issues they, they really do take the shine off of this figure um aesthetically speaking i think it looks really good you know for most part as i said i've, I've pointed out some things i'm not too keen on you know i i think the face is a little bit off model maybe it's also a little bit too light compared to this gray but you know i can live with that um i i again i still think that you know this is just a different problem isn't it you've still got partial visibility of wheels etc but you know it does generally look okay it's a bit messy with screw holes and pin holes everywhere but again it, you know you can kind of live with it um yeah so so i think it's really just like that the finesse like i you know fans toys used to have like a real name for this kind of quality or associated with quality and i really don't think it's there anymore uh, you know I, quite a lot of their figures now are developing qc issues or have qc issues um or or just not fun to, to mess around with you know uh so yeah i don't know i know they got their like very very loyal fan base so i'll probably get roasted for this but uh it's it's my honest opinion of it um anyway uh, what I want to do just just briefly before I, I finish up uh, is to bring in some comparison figures. I guess you know people have probably already seen this, but it wouldn't it wouldn't be a review if I didn't bring in MP45. Really, would it? Just to see what they look like together, uh, and there they are. And yeah, I, do you know what? Like I've come to live with the, the feet on MP45 now. I think it still looks good. I I do. I think it looks very toony. Uh, you know, uh, could fans toys do a better version? Maybe they've had a couple of years to to sort of see what people didn't like about this, and they've done they've done their cliff jumper. If they have the balls to do a bumblebee, which I'm not sure they will do, um, then they maybe could reshell this to be something slightly better than this. But again, if it's got the same QC issues as this, I will take this bumblebee all day long. You know. Um, even when you look at it from the back, like that backpack, to my mind, is no worse than this. You know, it's it's quite tidy when you've actually got it transformed properly and compacted properly, which most people don't seem to from what I've seen online. It's not really that messy. It doesn't really look that big. You know, the box, That's see what I mean about the contours? Like this is much more aesthetically pleasing than a box with something hanging off the back of it. And I just think the way they've designed the knees even looks slightly better. They still have the same problem, but they still look slightly better than uh, the, the fans toys version. Um, I just, just feel like this was much maligned and, and rightly so for some areas, like the feet are quite lazy and the, but the rest of it, I don't think it's that bad at all, but I do think they look really good together. You know, it's nice to have a proper tune B and cliff together. Um, so I'm very happy with that. They will, you know, they will look good on the shelf and it will replace Toro, as I said, in my MP display. And really, once Variator, uh, which is Stan's Toys Gears, arrives, which looks quite, quite tidy, um, to replace Grump, which is still a good figure. Um, but, uh, you know, Variator's just slightly more tune accurate. Um, once that's that's arrived, it's really only Wind Charger that's, that's crying out for like a, a proper tune um centric version and uh, maybe fans toys will actually do something with that who knows um it probably should be uh, well it actually it'd be remiss of me if i didn't bring in a couple of other bots actually so i need to bring in his moon base buddy don't i and obviously there is there is fans toys jazz there at the back there jive um which is a good figure that is that is probably the best fans toys figure i've handled in a long time uh, and I know that had its detractors for its transformation, which was which wasn't the easiest, I will say, <laughs> but it was a breeze compared to this thing. Um, I think he looks good with him as well. You know, 
that's a good figure. And obviously as well, you kind of have to bring in the big guy as well, don't you? If you do any comparison, you've got to bring in MP44. You've got to have Prime for any comparison. Uh, just so you can see the scale, really. You, you know, I'll, I'll move the camera up a bit and then we'll move Cliffy back. Um, just so you can see where he scales. Obviously, I haven't got Prime stood up right, but, you know, he's he's the same same height as MP45. So he's, you know, there or thereabouts. So he scales well with uh, with Prime. OK, uh, hopefully that's enough comparisons for you. Um, let's uh, let's clear the deck, shall we? Let's get some of these guys out of the way uh, just so I can have Cliff front and centre. At the end of the video, you know, it's his video after all. Don't want the other guy stealing the limelight. Honestly, I don't want to sound like I'm being overly negative. Um, you know, I am quite critical in these reviews. That's kind of the point. But yeah, I, I am a slightly disappointed with this. Again, um, I feel like the quality is not quite there. I think aesthetically speaking, it's really good. It, it really speaks to my my preferred tastes when it comes to, uh, you know, the cartoon and comic models. Uh, it's just some things are slightly lacking with it. As I say, the engineering is overly complicated. The QC on it is not great. Um, you know, overly stiff joints here, ridiculously loose joints here. Uh, I mean, that is just useless as a joint. It's, it's I can only have that arm down or up. I can't, I can't even have it up now because it's not even sticking up. So it's now actually for refusing to stay up, whereas it would earlier. Now I can only have that arm down. So that arm is completely useless now. Um, I may even contact the vendor about that because that's just absolutely, that's just junk, isn't it? Um, yeah, so they, these things do take the shine off of it. But it's going to look good on the shelf. That's the main thing. It's going to fill out my display. And it has enough posability in it that I can get some some options out of it, I'm sure. Uh, just maybe not the ones I wanted now that I can't get that arm to stay in a position because <laughs> that was the pose I had it in before I transformed was that arm was kind of halfway up and that arm was another way. Uh, anyway, uh, that has annoyed me. Just doing what I'm supposed to do with the figure has rendered it inoperable um, to an extent. But there you go. Um that's probably all I'm going to have to say on this for now. I've, I've gone over over length as usual, um, or my plan length. I always end up doing stupidly long reviews. Um, I don't have anything else on the horizon at the moment. Funnily enough, uh, this is this is kind of it for a moment. Um, who knows what will come up? I think I, I need to do a collection update at some point. I planned to do one the other day. In fact, I recorded one, and then I remembered this guy was arriving and thought there's literally no point doing this when I've got the parkour coming in a couple of weeks. So that will be the next thing on the channel, probably. Um, after that, I really don't know what's coming out that I'm going to be buying. So it could be a bit of a, a fallow period coming up. I'm sure I'll find something. Anyway, as always, thanks for watching. I hope you got some useful info out of this, something you might not have got from another review. Um, certainly length, if nothing else. Eh? Uh, but so yeah, it just remains for me to say uh, thanks for watching again. And until next time, take care, everyone. And I'll catch you in the next video.